Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to install and configure DFS server role on Windows Server 2022. DFS namespace enables you to group shared folders located on different servers into one or more logically structured namespace. This makes it possible to give users a virtual view of shared folders where a single path leads to files located on multiple servers. As the name suggests, the files are distributed across various file servers and locations and you can use DFS to access the shared folders of those servers from a single path. The two components of DFS are DFS namespace and DFS replication. DFS namespace allows the building of the namespace and the logical folder structure. These folders can be on multiple servers. DFS replication is a rule service that enables to replicate folders between multiple file servers across limited bandwidth network connections. DFS replication is a good solution to keep file servers in sync when you have branches and must share the same file servers across the organization. The best way to taste DFS is to install and configure it in your taste lab setup first. Let's understand the taste lab we will use in this video. We have single domain active directory forest named msftwebcast.com. This is a Windows Server 2022 domain controller. For this example, I have created one OU named production team. I have created two users and add them to the security group called production users. We will use this group to assign permissions. This VM is our Windows Server 2022 member server that has been joined to our domain. On this member server, we want to install and configure DFS namespace. We also have one more Windows 10 client VM. First, we will need to install the DFS namespace server role on our member server. Open server manager, click on manage and select add roles and features. On before you begin screen, click next. Make sure role base or feature base installation is selected. Click next. Select the local server and click next. Expand file and storage services and file and iSCSI services. Tick the box for DFS namespace. You will receive a pop-up window where you will be asked to add some other required features. Click on add features to confirm the additional features. This will add all the necessary roles and components so you don't have to configure anything else separately. Ensure DFS namespaces option is ticked. Click next. On the features page, leave the defaults and click next. Review your installation selections and click the install button to install DFS namespaces on member server. The installation will be finished in a few seconds. We can also use Windows PowerShell to quickly install DFS namespace server role on our member server. Once installed, click on the close button to close the wizard. Now that the DFS namespace role is installed and available on our server, we must configure the DFS service and create the DFS infrastructure. So let's build the DFS namespace structure and the required folders. Click on tools and click on DFS management. Click on namespaces. At the moment, we don't have any DFS namespace in our active directory. To create a new, right click on namespace and select new namespace. Type or browse the server name. You want to use it as a namespace host. Click on browse. Click on advanced and click on find now. From the list, select WS2022 have an SRV01 and click OK. Again, click OK. So our member server WS2022 have an SRV01 is going to host DFS namespace for us. Now click Next. Enter the name for this DFS namespace. Let me type pub DFS. You can specify any name of your choice. 
In this example, I have given name pubdfs. Now click on edit settings. Here we can define the location of a shared folder and the permissions for sharing it. We will use the default path and permission in our example. You can change it as per your requirement. Under shared folder permissions, we can confirm that all users have read-only permissions on this root shared folder. Click OK. Click Next to continue. Now select the type of namespace you want to create. We select domain-based namespace and select the Enable Windows Server 2008 mode checkbox. Select this checkbox if the functional label of your domain is Windows Server 2008 or higher. Like with Windows Server 2008 mode, the namespace supports access-based enumeration. Click Next. On the Review Settings and Create Namespace page, click Create. Once the namespace has been created successfully, click Close. Expand Namespaces. Uh, let me maximize it. Okay. We can now see that our pop DFS namespace has been created successfully. Let's verify DFS functionality on our client computer. Go to our Windows 10 client computer. Log into this Windows 10 computer using the account of TasteUser1. Open Run menu and type tab slash msftwebcast.com slash pubdfs. Hit Enter key to access it. Here, msftwebcast.com is our Active Directory domain name. We can verify that user can access the DFS namespace successfully. Close the File Explorer window. Go back to our member server VM. Uh, let's manually create one shared folder for the testing purpose. Let's go back to Server Manager and click on File and Storage Services. Click on Shares. At the moment, as you can see, we have created only one shared folder on this server and which is our DFS namespace. Let's open File Explorer. Click on this PC. Go to D drive. Create a folder named Production Team. Right click on Production Team folder and select Properties. First, go to Sharing tab. Click on Advanced Sharing. Select Share this folder box and give the shared name. It is recommended that shared names do not have a space. So in this case, we will make this shared name as production team without any spaces. Click on permissions. Give everyone full control permission. Click on apply and OK. Again, click on apply and OK. We can now see that the folder is now shared. Since we have given the full control permission at the sharing level, we want to customize the NTFS permission. So now go to Security tab. Click on Advanced. Since this share is for production users only, we want other users should not have access to this folder. So we will remove the users group and add the production users group with read and write permissions. Click on Disabled Inheritance. Select Convert inherited permissions into explicit permissions on this object. Remove both users group entries one by one. Click on Add and click on Select Principal. Type Name, Production Users and click on Check Names. Let's select Production Users group. Click OK. Make sure that this permission applies to this folder only. Some predefined permissions are already assigned. Let's assign write permission to. Click OK. Click on Apply and OK. Share and NTFS permissions will vary depending on the level of permissions that you are trying to give to your users. In this example, we have assigned this level of share and NTFS permissions. Close Open File Explorer window. We will now create namespace folder for production team into the existing namespace. Go back to DFS Management Console. In this example, we are adding a folder on the same server. But this method is applicable for all servers within a domain. Right click on the newly created namespace and select New Folder. Give the new folder a name. For example, Production Team. 
Click Add to add the folder targets. Click on Add. Click on Browse. As we can see, a local server WS2022-SAV01 is already selected. Suppose if you are adding a folder from the other server, you have to click on Browse and select your server from the Active Directory like this way. From this list, select your server where you have created the shared folder. Okay? Now once you select your file server, all the shared folder available on your file server will be listed here. So from here, you have to select the shared folder which you want to add as a folder target. Select the shared folder we have created earlier. For this example, that is production team. Select it and click on OK. You can also directly enter the shared folder path here. Confirm that the correct path to folder target is selected. It must show member server's name and our folder target name. Click OK. Click OK to save settings and close the new folder window. Expand DFS namespaces. We can confirm that the production team folder has been added successfully. Once you click on folder name, you can check active directory site name and original folder target path. In our case, the AD site name is default site name, which is default first site name and path is UNC path WS2022-SRV01 slash production team. Uh, let me open file explorer again on our member server uh, access production team folder and let me create a one a text file here. Uh, let me save this file and close it. So I have created one text file and have put some random text inside the notepad file. Let's go back to a Windows 10 client computer and let's again unlock this Windows 10 computer. Let's open a run menu. Enter the DFS namespace path, which is uh, UNC path msoptwebcast.com slash pub DFS and hit enter key. Regardless of which server you are in, you will see the production team folder. But this time we can see the icon is little bit different than the regular folders. This indicate that we are using DFS namespace. Let's try to access this folder. Okay. The user test user one, which is the member of production team security group is able to access this shared folder successfully. Now let's try to create a new folder here. Let's give name user one. So we can confirm that user one is also able to create a folder and rename it. That means the user has full control on that shared folder. The user can also see the existing NotFed file which is created by administrator on our member server. Let's right click on user1 folder and select properties. Go to DFS tab. We can see the path is UNC path msftwebcaster.com slash pub DFS slash production team. But the referral path is here which is UNC path WS2022-SRV01 slash production team. We can verify the DFS namespace folder path as well as the actual folder path. Let's click OK. We can map this shared folder to users of production team using group policy or PowerShell script. Uh, let's copy the shared folder path. Click on this PC. Click on computer. Click on Map Network Drive and select Map Network Drive. Let's enter the copied path of our shared folder. I have selected Reconnect at Sign In option. Click on Finish. Uh, let me close this. Click on this PC and under Network Location, verify that we have successfully mapped a network drive. We can see the production team is mapped successfully. Let's access it. Here we can see the folder and the text file. That's all for this video on how to set up DFS namespaces in Windows Server 2022. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.